teachers, when did karmic justice finally come to that one troublesome student? Had a kid who was a real douchinazel when I taught fifth. This kid, let's call him Ray, had one of those moms who refused to hold him accountable for anything. It was always, some other kid did it, Ray was just protecting himself, Ray just wanted to fit in, Ray was being targeted. Also, she was one of those kids who would ask Ray if he were guilty, and take his no as incontestable truth. She would say, my son doesn't lie to me, oh really, your kid doesn't lie, your kid and Jesus, all kids lie. Anyway, I had a full caseload as a special ed teacher, so I got a paraprofessional, call him Steve. Ray hated Steve, had some kind of issue with male authority figures. One day Ray gets in trouble coming back from recess, Steve reprimanded him, verbally. By the time Ray makes it to the classroom, He's saying how Steve got in his face and shouted at him, nope. He asks to go talk to the principal, yay. Ray's gone for at least 5 minutes, tells the principal how Steve grabbed his arm. When mom comes and gets him, now he's saying Steve pushed him. Next day we get a phone call. Ray's mom and grandma are coming in and want a beating with Steve and the principal to discuss how Steve choked Ray. Steve's freaking out. Other kids were there, but no adults, no cameras. How can he prove his innocence? I tell him, go to the meeting and before anybody says anything, have Ray share what happened. Steve came back smiling. As soon as one story came out, everybody else is disagreeing. Well Ray told me but Ray told Emmy. I would have loved to see the mom's face as her kid is proven a liar in front of everyone. Had a kid that threw a lock at my head not get expelled because it just slipped out of her hand. She got expelled a few months later for bringing a weapon to school. Have another one. We had these two kids, brother-sister combo, with fabulous names. Let's call them princess and major. Actually not bad kids, just a little lazy. But the parents were the laziest freaks. Did anything to not work, just sit around and exist. I'm surprised they had the motivation to get off their asses and procreate. Twice. Anyway, there was always some excuse why homework wasn't done, and this was 4th grade, in a city, so homework was crap like reading a little booklet to your folks, or practicing multiplication facts. The kids also missed school all the time. The kids were honest, mommy didn't want to wake up and get us ready for the bus. Daddy was up late with his friends, so we report them to truancy. They turn around and find some lawyer to sue the school for their kids under achievement. If the teachers were doing their jobs, these precious children would be pre-med students by now. Luckily we kept really good records. The lawyer shows up, the principal, superintendent, truancy officer, our lawyer. Their lawyer starts in, our principal breaks in, holds up his hand, asks the truancy officer. How many days have these children missed ends up they'd missed enough days in the last 3 years to equate more than a year of school. Principal says, now mom, sir, how are we supposed to deliver a quality education to your children if you don't get them to school? Their lawyer quietly packed up a crap and left. Not too lazy to get a lawyer, wow. I interned in a class with this kid who always thought he was smarter than everyone else. He was pretty smart, but not by too much. He always got paired with kids not as smart as him, so he would always be really smug when dealing with them. We learned he got that from his parents. During a parent-teacher conference, his parents praised that boy up and down and thought he was the smartest kid in the school. They built him up as that and they got him thinking that too. Then they went off on my mentor teacher. She wasn't providing him with higher enough education. She was bringing him down. She was terrible. The conference ended when my mentor teacher left the room crying after the verbal lashing. Well about a week later, there was an event where parents came to watch their children in class. It was to watch them do math games with other students. Well my mentor teacher paired this smug little bastard with the actual smartest kid in class. The one who was working on more advanced classes after school. The kid got shamed. His parents were so flustered during the event. They were very visibly nervous and upset looking as this kid got destroyed game after game. They left before it was all done and took him out of school for the rest of the day. Delicious. I coached middle school football. Some kids have come out of their shell by then, others have not. But at least most of the early bloomers were jerks to make life heck for everybody. The team's starting halfback was one of those jerks. 
He gave a defensive lineman heck and since everybody thought he was cool they gave him heck right along with him. The D lineman was a big guy but not aggressive or outgoing. Still just in his shell really. He did fine out there because he was a big guy but hardly played to his potential. The little running backs took their Napoleon complexes out on the big guy by running by him and shouting P every time he failed to stop them. Rather than fight back to make the play he would just ignore it and line up and try again the next play. One day the whole thing just clicked for the big guy and he started making plays. He learned to get off his blokers and form tackle and attack the ball carrier. It was a cool thing to see. He loved it. When he really started getting into a grove I started running the jerk halfback right at the blooming D lineman and watched him plant that guy in the ground with a thud every time. It was just getting easier as I made sure they ran the same play at him play after play. Soon. Bruised and beaten. The jerk halfback asked how many times are you going to run this play and I responded once for every time you called him a P. I totally played this in my head like a scene from Little Giants. Disney Gold, baby, except for the P part, we're going to have to change that for sissy or something. First grade here, had a boy that would not stop hitting kids with basketballs. He'd run up and pop the ball right at students. Sometimes he'd toss it real fast, and say catch, but most often, he'd just throw it at children on the playground who were completely unaware. This kid seemed like he was trying to knock other children down. He'd laugh his butt off if he saw someone stumble, or fall after they were hit by his basketball. After talking with his parents, we told them we'd be taking the balls away from him until after spring break, to see if his behavior improved. As promised he was allowed to play basketball again after break, but we warned he better behave. It didn't take even 5 minutes before he stalked, and shot that spalding special at this poor little girl, knocking her down. She cried and pointed at him, mulch dangling from her hair, he's mean maze. Misty I agreed, and told her he'd have the basketballs taken away for the rest of the school year. As I got up and walked his way, he started to bolt. He ran out of the playground, past the sand pit, and onto the basketball court. He maintained eye contact with me, and before I could take another step, a stray ball from a 5th grade game hit the edge of the backboard, bounced off, and hit that little crap square in the face. He went down like a sack of potatoes. Of course I ran over to him, and made sure he was okay he may be acting like a little crap, but he's still just a child. I called for the nurse since he was out cold. He woke up with me above him, and started crying saying he'd never do it again, please. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I won't do it again. I'll have to wait and see this coming year if Karma kicked his butt or not, because he didn't want to pick up another basketball the rest of the school year. He may think you are a wizard that can control basketballs. Encourage this. I have a ton of stories, but this is the only one that made me laugh, cause I am a horrible person. I had a 5th grader who looked like a white version of Cleveland Brown Jr. Right down to the hanging cheeks and no neck. This kid was a know-it-all menace. He'd interrupt me, do that weird Rihanna hand twirl, and say, we'll actually miss I guys, and then state some random fact that was often wrong or irrelevant. Well eventually while on lunch duty I see that his lunch every day is a can of soda, a bag of chips, and tons of candy, like the bag is busting at the seams. I alert the principal because I'm worried that his grandmother, who was raising him, wasn't feeding him properly. The principal calls the grandma and grandma gets angry. She was letting him pack his own lunch and wasn't checking it. So she's embarrassed that we've called her on it. She tells us that she will only pack healthy food now. She then tells us that the kid's doctor said he needs a serious diet. She tells us that he cannot have any candy. Cut to a week later. The kid is still being a little crap and pisses off another student. Student runs to principal and says that the kid has been sneaking candy to school every day. The principal goes to talk to him. The kid shoves a chocolate bar into his mouth and the principal takes away the blow pop sucker he has. This kid proceeds to roll around on his belly across the entire hallway, screeching and crying so hard that he's choking on the half chewed chocolate bar. Chocolate spittle and tears everywhere. A kindergarten student walks by and says, you look like a baby. The kid stops wallowing long enough to punch the little student. He got suspended for violence and I got a peaceful classroom. I feel like you've hit some type of rock bottom if a person who was an actual baby less than 4 years ago calls you a baby. Freshman English. 
Busted a kid for plagiarism. He was furious and refused to drop the course. I gave him a second chance. And he continued to plagiarize. He was a slimy, smarmy kid who thought I was just a dumb, clueless Tay. But jokes on him. He ended up failing the course three ways. Plagiarizing. Exceeding absences. And failing to turn in a complete final. You can argue about one way to get an F. You can't argue about three. Not a teacher. But one time when I was in kindergarten. A kid looked me straight in the eyes. Bit himself on the wrist. Hard. And ran to the teacher and blamed me. That little C. They sent me to the principal's office. My mom was called down. I got yelled at and cried. A week later. The kid did it again. And the teacher saw him do it. Felt so good to have the principal apologizing profusely to me. While that little shithead got a mouthful from his parents. My brother used to do this to get me in trouble. I knew I was going to get in trouble and couldn't prove it wasn't me. So I did it. A lot harder than he did to himself. He quit. I teach college students to be teachers. My first year doing this, I had a student who was always late. Turned in the bare minimum of work. Always had excuses. I told him he had to improve because if he did this on the job, he'd get fired. He kept coasting and the other profs let him get by first teaching job he got fired i laughed in the privacy of my office and i'm not sorry i was teaching music i had a flautist who was fantastic he practiced four hours every day and wanted to be the next james galway guy who does the fluty shire theme in the lord of the rings unfortunately he had an ego the size of texas he told the girl next to him who also wanted to be a professional flutist that she was abysmal and should just go kill herself he refused to audition for our local honor band, which was part of his grade, because he refused to lower himself to playing with such talentless musicians. He would be about my conducting in class when I wouldn't cue him because I was too busy cueing the low brass who needed help with their entrances aka teaching. He refused to play a theme from a popular video game at a concert, something that we play to get people to attend because we need that money to keep the program going. It was apparently not artistic enough. Then he refused to show up to a concert because he was embarrassed to be seen performing with his high school band. So he failed band and I kicked that toxic little crap out. But he was talented and he wanted to be a flutist. So he auditioned for Juilliard and made it in. This sucker quits before the first semester is over because he believed he was more talented than his teachers. He earned a symphony gig in a very well known group thanks to a blind audition where he wasn't permitted to talk and reveal how much of a douchebag he was. That lasted two weeks before he dissed the very famous conductors conducting and got his butt fired. His career is dead because he couldn't keep his ego in check. And I find it immensely satisfying. Dang. He just flew straight into the sun. Last year had a 7 year old in my class who was just a pain. He's the only child I've ever taught who I've actually disliked. He would throw things around the classroom, pinch other children, stab them with pencils. He was rude to everyone and would always blame it on someone else. Talking to his parents wouldn't help because they believed everything he said, even over adults who had actually witnessed him doing it. They would give excuses and say that other children were blaming him or that he was being picked on. There was nothing wrong with this child other than he had been brought up with no consequences in his life. Anyway, one break time he was harassing another child and I guess they just had enough and this usually mild mannered child just punched him in the stomach causing the horrible child to wet himself. When following the indecent up all of the other children who witnessed it, around 5 or 6, completely closed ranks and denied that it ever happened. I can't usually condone when children hit back, it causes so many other problems, but you better believe all the adults that have had to deal with this child were rooting for the hitter. I teach kindergarten, and I had a terrible, terrible child in my class last year. He liked to pull his desk away from the girl sitting across from him so her pencils and crayons would go falling on the floor. Finally, one day she got fed up and slammed her desk back into his, unfortunately for him. His fingers happened to be there. I had to resist the urge to be like that's what you get but instead I just reminded him that that's why I said not to move his desk away from the rest of the table and sent him to the nurse. Oh crap I know how bad that hurts. Good for you for not punishing the girl for dishing out some karma. 
When I was younger the teacher got tired of the kid who kept disrupting the class and she gave extra homework to everyone in the class except the troublesome kid and made all the students write thanks for the extra homework. Name. Somehow he stopped believing he was cool after that. Straight from the drill sergeant's playbook. That one. I was in pre-k in the early 80s at a private catholic school. This one kid, Amy, would always bite the other kids. I don't remember exactly how it went down but I guess one day I came home crying or had a really bad bite mark or something and my mom was pee. She took me straight to the superintendent, not the principal, and showed her what happened. The superintendent, a really old nun, did not put up with that crap. She called Amy into her office and bit the frick out of her arm. Amy started crying but she never bit anyone again. Old nuns in the 80s were hardcore. Note, I am not saying what happened was right, just that it happened. I taught a comparative anatomy animal dissection lab section back in college. I had one kid in a section, let's call him Kevin, who never listened to dissection instructions and just dove in with a scalpel, dicing and chopping and generally mutilating most of the internal organs. His first karmic warning came when we were dissecting squid, and he got squid juice on himself. Smelled awful for the rest of that class, however, he kept on ignoring instructions and hacking away, and this time, karmic justice struck on our very last dissection project, the fetal pig. Kevin really wanted to see the pig's brain. Kevin couldn't get through the, the skull, so he started whacking away at it with the butt of a flat pry knife. I told him to stop, but he had to give it one last, mighty thwack. Crack the skull breaks, and rubbery piglet brain bits come flying out everywhere. Mostly over Kevin, splattering him. Unfortunately, while protesting my refusal to let him dice this piglet into pancetta cubes, Kevin had his mouth open. Thankfully, preserved pig brain, ingested orally, seemed to have a calming, subduing effect on Kevin for the last couple classes. TL. DR. Don't jerk in dissections unless you're willing to swallow. Com let's call him Kevin. There can only be one. TL. DR. Super lazy apathetic kid gets an F in my class, and that's not the worst of his problems. I once taught a grade 11 history class where I had one kid who caused me a lot of grief. He was frequently late, walking in 20-30 minutes late. Class was during C slot, he had a spare during B, and would actually take the bus home after his A class, and simply stay home for an hour, or just not show up at all. Additionally, he was super passive aggressive, rarely handed anything in, and obsessed himself with spending time on his super expensive smartwatch and or phone, which is also somewhat more of a big deal as my school is in a low, middle income area and more than half the students can't even afford a simple phone. Anyway, I'd pretty much had it with him. A major project comes up halfway through and he doesn't bother to do any of the group work. I wait projects 50 stroke 50 personal input versus group mark and then didn't show up for the entire week of presentations. I'd had lots of conversations with mom at this point, who luckily had my back and was totally fed up with him too. Suffice to say, I gave him the only zero in the class. So of course he hasn't learned, and his grades are below failing mark. Test on the last unit before the exam is coming up, and I give the students the option to write a unit test and replace their lowest test grade with it. Obviously every kid takes the chance. He saunters in late, and when I asked if he's going to do the op test, he just said nope, sat down, and played on his phone. I was a bit dumbfounded, whatever. Holy cow, that justice boner though, and I'm a girl. In high school we had this little crap kid named Brandon. I only had one class with him but that class is where the story happened. It was 11th grade geography, and our teacher was one of the nicer teachers I can remember. Brandon would always push her buttons like I'm sure he did to everyone. He would never take it too far. I think he just loved the attention of getting the whole class to look at him or laugh at what he was doing. He would make little noises, tell stupid jokes during lecture, pretend to sleep and snore, and any other stupid irritating crap that you could think of. Our teacher, she was quite a patient lady but you could tell by mid-year that she had enough of his crap as anyone. She couldn't even really punish him because Brandon loved that kind of attention and it made him all the happier. The few times he got too much, she would give him detention and a couple times sent him to the office. 
which just made him more giddy. We had a very tame office staff and they would keep him in the office for an hour or something and just let him out. Full stop. She tried everything and you could tell she was at the end of her wits. A few weeks after 9-11, some kid thought it would be funny to call in a bomb threat. They cleared the school and went locker by locker. They found nothing of course, and we went back in. As soon as we sat down in that geography class, an office staff member came into our class and went up to our teacher and whispered something into her ear. I still remember the calm look on her face. In the most professional way, she looked over at Brandon and said, You're being called to the office. She went on with the rest of the class completely normal. They had found quite a bit of weed in Brandon's locker and as a result he was expelled over it. She slipped the weed in his locker. What a badass. College instructor here was teaching Eng 102. Smart but kid was on a sports team as a student manager and this was his life. He lived to pick up jock straps and clean lockers and all that. Well, anyway, that's fine and I was happy for him. He sat in the front row and was always always talking about stuff that happened with the team or he was fiddling on his phone and iPad. Sometimes he was doing all those things. He was really scattered. At this point I wasn't really angry with him. Just concerned. He was way too cool to actually do work when I gave the class time to work on their papers and he decided he didn't need the book. I told him many times he needed to buckle down and get going. He didn't. For over half the semester, he would just get up and leave class 15 minutes in if he decided he didn't want to stay. He would make any class discussion heck for everyone else because he couldn't for some reason follow the thread of the conversation and would ask inane questions. He was also pretty sexist and was always talking about various ways he'd cheated in classes or helped other popal cheat. He was so incredibly friendly though. I told him many times he shouldn't discuss these kinds of things in front of a teacher. So finally, I am telling the class that the last day to drop is tomorrow and blah blah blah. He comes up to me after class and asks if he should drop. I look at his grade which is an abomination and tell him, yes I think the best course of action would be for him to drop. Well, he stopped coming to class but he never dropped. I gave him an F. He sent me an email with a frowny face with lots of parentheses. Like this. Nah man, he sent you a centipede. Sister told me this story. Teacher kept a pack of Aureus behind the whiteboard and when he would walk out of the class, students would jump in and grab some and eat them before he came back. Teacher noticed so he put really hot sauce inside the Aureus and left on purpose. Came back in and the kids who stole the cookies were left heavily breathing and sweating. They never stole cookies again. I'm an elementary school teacher, so this doesn't seem quite as serious as the others. Here goes though. There was a problem child in my class who thought it was cool to not listen to teacher advice, shug off reprimands, and make snarky comments. He was hard to manage but by no means a bad kid. We have a rule at our school that there's no running on the deck outside of our classroom. The official reason for this is that it's dangerous, but the rule is often ignored when no teacher is looking. One day the entire class and myself were standing out on the deck, lined up for lunch, when this particular student was coming back from getting something in the front building. He decided to blatantly ignore the no running on the deck rule that he had been reminded of probably a hundred times before and he began to sprint towards the class. Right as I yelled his name, he tripped and went flying. It was an epic wipeout that sent him sprawling across the deck, which the entire class saw. I checked if he was okay, and didn't say anything about it at the time, but I was able to remind him later that we do have rules for a reason. I did feel rather like justice had been served in that once delicious moment. However, TL, DR, Snarky kid had epic wipeout because he ignored the rule. Justice. Elementary teacher here. My first year teaching was freaking terrible. Really tough school combined with my rookie class management skills made for a free roaming terror class. By mid year I was at my wits end. Was trying right the ship and struggling. Field trips were the worst thing I'd ever experienced. Enter my principal. He had observed my class a few weeks before and was shocked at easily 10 of my students behavior. Told me he knew I had a field trip coming up, and he would happily stay back and watch any of my students that I didn't want to go because of their behavior. So, a few days before the trip I told my class this. However, I waited until read aloud because that's when it was toughest. The good 12 kids in class loved read aloud. 
they just wanted to enjoy the book. The other 1014 would constantly go around and not listen to a word. So, I casually mentioned, in the middle of read aloud that some students would be staying back from our fabulous field trip in a few days with the principal. I told them it was all behavior based. Of course, the good kids heard me, the little shoots didn't. The next two days the little shoots continue being little shoots. The morning of the field trip, about two hours before the trip I remind the class of the principal's visit. The little shoots become little angels. Field trip comes and in walks my principal. I calmly read off the list of 13 names staying while the rest of the class comes with me. I had left the most boring worksheets possible for the kids staying behind. And as we walked out the door all the little shots were crying while my principal was reading them the riot act. The remainder of my class and I had a lovely trip, enjoyed a great play, they glimpsed what school should be like and I got the glimpse of what teaching could be. When we got back, it looked like the little shoots had never stopped crying. Best day of the year. Mine is a shorter one. There was a clique of the popular kids who were often jerks and acted out because hey that's funny in high school. Our city had a living center for the mentally ill, that also had a public swimming pool, and when we got to the swim module in gym that was where we headed. Well one day there's an extremely autistic 14 year old at the pool, like barely functioning, and Chatterfuck decides that it'll be funny to sit there and growl at him aggressively, like a hostile dog, because why the frick not, autistic kid loses his crap, he freaks right out, the kid's handler figures out what happens. Because someone discreetly tells her when she's wondering why her ward is losing his goddamn mind, and goes and talks to the teacher about it. Cool guy, is banned from the center, he automatically fails the module, they choose to take it a step further however and decide that he instantly fails the gym course, losing the credits he needed to graduate, in addition to a lengthy suspension. How a Monday some new kids were transferred into the elementary school I was working at. One was a total brat and the only open seat for him was next to a sweet little girl with autism. He was antagonizing her all day until he made the mistake of growling at her during snack and she just growled back and smashed his bag of goldfish into tiny little pieces with her fist. Not teacher but he'll tell you a story anyway. There was this guy in middle school that would take shoots and pee in the hallways really weird but he somehow thought it was funny so he kept doing it. Well I was locker buddies with this really early developed guy in middle school. He was like Hagrid big to me back then. I noticed the weird kid standing next to my locker but standing in front of Hagrid's locker. Him thinking oh crap something's about to go down so I waited. Hagrid gets to his locker and this kid was still standing in front of his locker. Hagrid tells him to please move out of the way because he was blocking the way. Weird kid says no and starts chuckling. All I am thinking is oh crap oh crap. Hagrid asks again and still the same response. This is when Hagrid freaking kicks this mf in the face. Like I've never seen anything like this before. This kid is standing straight up and he lifed his leg higher than I am in height and kicked to this kid in the face. Hagrid gets suspended and tells me if that kid ever bothers me to let him know so he can kick him in the face again. They're in the way Ari. I'm. Wah. S-L-A-M-M-M. Park Ranger here. We do this urban education initiative with some Michelle Obama money to bus inner city kids out to a wetland. There was this one kid. Let's call him Pablo. Who was this third grade classroom's funny guy? Live animal demonstration. Ask about its nipples and then repeat a word nipple louder so everyone could laugh. While we're walking talk about animal poop the whole time. Of course I was professional and answered the questions because I begrudgingly know a lot about scat and nipples. Every learning opportunity for other kids he would barge into and take everybody out of the moment. Every time I got kids excited about nature, he would do some lame peer pressure so the vibe was no, nature sucks. I wanted to push him into some briars pretty bad. Justice came swiftly when I was explaining poison ivy to half the group he swaggers over and does some kind of these leaves, mind prank to disrupt the focus of the group. I wanted to tell him it was poison ivy but instead told him to put it down, and the other kids were like drop it the reverse psychology made him caress the leaves even more and then before he touched his face I had to tell him what they were. And Pablo then cried. His crude but cool guy persona was shattered and everybody listened to me for the rest of the field trip. 
One of my favorite things about being a teacher is when a child experiences natural consequences like tripping after they refuse to stop running or accidentally hitting themselves when they are trying to flail around to get away from you. My favorite I have ever witnessed though, was from a preschooler. He used to army crawl under the lunch tables and jump off the furniture. One day in the lunchroom, he got pee for some unidentifiable reason. He stood rooted in one spot and screamed that he was never moving. He wanted to make a point so he stomped as viciously as he could. He was wearing really flat footed sandals on a hard floor and must have hit the ground with a perfectly level foot. He face was like a cartoon. His mouth made an immediate upside you and he screamed like that guy on Spongebob who yells. My leg. It just felt like justice to me. I just snort laughed at this. It's so visual. It's beautiful. This one is more sad than satisfying and more directed at the parents than the student. I'm an elementary special ed teacher at a school for children with emotional and or behavioral disorders. Every kid is troublesome by nature. But this one student was truly insane. When we got him he was a very quiet and polite boy, and the IEP did not mention any kind of behavioral issues. We had no idea why he was being sent to us. Then slowly we started to see what it was. Every once in a while he would just go crazy, laughing maniacally, cursing, insulting other students, getting out of his seat to dance or run out the room, slap his butt at the teacher, etc. Other times he would just start uncontrollably sobbing. Then other times he would talk to someone named Daniel, despite there being no Daniel in the school. Daniel would make him say and do these things. This student told us, the student is only 9, and the things he was saying were things I didn't hear until high school. It was obvious someone was showing this stuff to this kid, and it was also obvious that a much more serious mental disorder was present. We constantly talked to the parents about it, but they did nothing about it. We wanted the kid to get help, not punished. After a year and a half of no progress, this past July comes around and summer program starts. The student doesn't show up and we have no idea why. Turns out the student did something so horrible that he was taken to some kind of mental hospital. We have no idea what, but all we know is he has been committed. I hated having to work with this kid, but I really did feel bad for him. And on his good days he was really a sweet kid. We told the parents but nope couldn't be bothered. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.